welcome back to the underdogs podcast we're on episode number three now as always we got another special guest but the normal guys we got me jordan daly craig smith mike taylor say what's up guys yo so yo yo what's, what's going on we got a little special guest again this week we got ricky davis we got a little ghost baller reunion going on right now so mike i'm gonna let you take it off and start this off this week all right all right all right well our guest our guest for this week is none other than Ricky. I need to Ricky, 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 the Cyrus <laughs> Davis. Well, I'm gonna start with um, you know just how I, you know, came into contact with you know what I'm saying with Ricky. You know, I, it was my rookie year with the Clippers. Um, I was coming off a championship in the G League. Um, Ricky was my vet. I think he was in what your tenth or eleventh year at that time. And Ricky was just one of those guys who still had that youthful energy after being, you know what I'm saying, in the game for that long. And that's kind of how we kind of gravitated towards each other is, you know what I'm saying, just off of that energy, just willing to play, willing to play defense, willing to do whatever it took to give, uh, you know, Clippers this, this new found, um, this new found energy that they was, you know, trying to rebuild and going through that process. Of uh, of rebuilding, I always like to say, you know, I was one of the originators of Lob City before Chris Paul came in there and just started, you know, what I'm saying using my DeAndre Blake Griffin <laughs> look connection. But yeah, um, you know, I learned a, a lot from Rick um, that single year that I was there, um, especially just about being professional day in and day out. Um, that was one of the biggest things. You know, I'm just staying ready. You know what I'm saying? You don't know when your number is going to be called. You don't know when it's, you know what I'm saying, going to be your time to shine. That's not up to you. But what you can control is being ready at any given time. You know what I'm saying? So that was kind of the mentality that I, you know what I'm saying, just just gradually just, just rubbed off from just being around you. You know what I'm saying? Just staying ready, being ready to shoot, being ready to score, being ready to get a bucket. You know what I'm saying? At any given moment, whether there is 30 seconds or whether I get three minutes, you know what I'm saying? Just just being ready. Craig, you want to go into, you know what I'm saying, a little bit about, you know what I'm saying, you guys' uh, interaction, and then we, we'll hop into some of the, ac- the accolades? <laughs> yeah. So uh, my, my time started in, in, in cold-ass Minnesota. <laughs> and uh, I, I just always remember um, Ricky always embracing me and Randy. Um, we were the rookies that year. Um, but – the thing about Ricky, Rick, Ricky was he didn't want us to play like rookies. He wanted us to play like we was already, you know what I'm saying, veterans in the league. So the fact that he would always preach to us, game in, game out, and I think his energy always set it off too because it's like when we had his, your energy, and KG's energy matchup, it was like we had the best practices because you guys brought the best out of us. And then it was always like teaching moments, you know what I'm saying? Like, Ricky's a great teacher, you know what I'm saying? Especially in Spain in certain situations. It's like, all right, look, you come off this screen right here, you know what I'm saying? We need you to be aggressive, so you're going to come in, you're going to hit a huh, huh, you know, like Rick's like real animated, and that's what you love about him because it's like, you know, it's that inner child ability of, of him still loving the game, you know what I'm saying? So, always felt that love and 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 ricky's always a family man you know what i'm saying what i've always noticed he always invited me and my family um up to eat don't y'all come upstairs get something to eat you know what i'm saying and and uh i just always appreciated from that because i felt like sometimes like my big bro he always get bad raps in, in certain situations due to the media and i always felt like that that wasn't right so i felt like you know, on my part, I had nothing but really great experiences with Ricky. You know what I'm saying? I always appreciate that, bro. You know what I'm saying? And we froze our butt off in Minnesota together. But we really had some good times. And I just wish they kept us together because in the in the beginning, before Coach Casey got fired, we was playoff bound before everything changed. So, you know, that's just something I think about. But like, we had some good times. Man, I appreciate it, man. And, and that's what it's all about, you know, because – when I came in the league at, at 17 years old, man, I didn't know I didn't know nothing about the NBA game. I didn't know nothing about life. So, you know, having those veterans teach me the game, having those guys full of energy, Bobby Fields, Anthony Mason, you know, guys going out partying and waking up first guy in the gym 
it's something that I knew from from day one. So to be able to have you guys as my rookies, man, and show y'all the way, but actually have you guys in tuned and listening, it, it, it felt better that you guys was actually paying attention and, and, and focus and doing the right things, listening, you know, so some, some rooks, you know, just didn't, didn't listen, didn't get it. And was just like, fuck it. I'm gonna do it my way. So, uh, man, I appreciate y'all just, just being there, being them underdogs, you know, knowing you supposed to be starting, knowing you supposed to be playing, but like Mike say, like Craig say, always being ready, always staying ready. You know, that's, that's what you can control is yourself. So, we know how politic your shit the league is. So you yeah, saw so you gotta just stay ready. Absolutely. All right. So Absolutely. just giving a little background about you and then I'ma I'm gonna let you tap into some of your um some some of your upbringing and everything. You know, something that was kind of popular like the last decade is, you know, a lot of uh a lot of um students of the game is doing this one and done deal. You know what I'm saying? And it's been like popular. You was kind of the person who kind of like started this, this, this kind of one and done thing, um, you know, in college. And it's, that's, that's just a unique situation that we want to tap into to a little bit. But going into, you know what I'm saying, a professional career, played at Charlotte. You got drafted to Charlotte, right? Drafted to Charlotte, yeah. Right yeah. after that first year of college. Yeah, so, uh, you know, going to college, went to Iowa, um, you know, was 16 at Iowa, uh, did one and done. I really wanted to come out my high school year, you know, but my mom wanted me to co- go to college so bad. So I decided to do one year college. You know, I had already knew I was going to do one and done already. So coach wasn't really playing me that much. That's why I really, really left. You know, I decided I was I was thinking about doing two years just because how young I was, but. You know, the coach wasn't playing me so much. He knew I was trying to go one and done. So he, was, you know, didn't start me the first five games, you know, hating on me like that. You know how the college coaches are. Mm-hmm. So I, I decided to come out. Um, I left school early, threw my books in the garbage, and I told moms, I'm gone. You know, went out to L.A., started working out at UCLA with all the guys, and, um, you know, went to the combine and, and just was, you know, the underdog. I was always the underdog. Nobody knew who I was coming from Iowa. They, you know, 17 years old. They like, who is he? You know, but you know, just having that that grit, that 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 thirst, you know, to to make it. Um, you know, just it, it sell me to the next level. So I had a good combine and, and got drafted 21st pick. So, like, trick. What was your draft process like being that you came, you went all the way to Cali to work out, start working out at UCLA? Like, how was that process? And how did you feel it made you better um, going into the draft? Man, I think it was amazing because, you know, in high school, I I actually played the, I played center. So for me, going from high school, playing center to college, going to play the three guard and then enter my name to the NBA. I think me going from Iowa to L.A. was probably the best thing that ever happened to me. Um, you know, I got with Kiki Vandaway, learned some footwork, and got with all those guys in L.A. that I was teaching. And, um, you know, I learned to play the guard position, man. And, you know, just going up there, my, my agent was Arn Tellum. At the time, I didn't even know I had one of the best best agents in the game. You know, so so going up there, seeing Kobe Bryant and Reggie Miller and working out with those guys, uh, man, it was amazing. Um, you know, didn't have to go to school no more, man. I was like a kid in <laughs> a candy store. Man, I showed up to UCLA. They was, they was in there playing, and I, I got my jeans on. And I'm like, who got next? They like, young fella, you got your jeans on. I'm like, shit, what you saying? <laughs> man, I went in there talking with with my jeans on, man. They like this little young nigga crazy. Uh, so man, that's how they that's how they first heard about me, man. Nigga coming there with his jeans on, a uh, young eye. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, it's it's so, not easy to dunk in clothes like that. You know what I'm saying? Everybody think it's easy to come out there and just dunk in your full clothes. It's not that easy. It's not that easy. But man, coming from you know the Midwest, you know you playing outside the snow. Mm-hmm. Man, you gotta have jeans, <laughs> long johns. You got everything. Everything. Playing in your coat. Yeah. So it, it was easy for me. 
But, um, you know, just working out every day, the preparation, going to UCLA, going to the sports club is, you know, I'm putting eight, 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 nine hours in, you know, to the game of basketball opposed to going to college eight or nine hours in school and a few hours in, on the court. Uh, you know, my game changed drastically. Um, and, you know, I went through, they don't even know, man, I went through the 2018, I went through 20, 25 team workout. Dang. Man, I was going from team to 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 team back home to team to team to team to team to back home. So uh, it was rough, but it was fun. You know, they they was complaining they was going on too many trips, and I was just out there just glad to be bagging all these guys that was top rated and, you know, just showing them what I could do at the age of 17 was just, you know, good for me. So that mentality, that mentality that you had during that, um, you know, doing that, doing that, uh, that, that draft, that combines and, you know what I'm saying? Just, just, just that whole process. You was just basically, you know what I'm saying? Just trying to get your name out there. Just trying to get seen, huh? Yes, sir. That's it. Just everybody trying to just figure out who that is. That's, that's, that's that Iowa boy. So quick question. Yeah. Do, do, do you wish... Do you wish that you would have um, skipped Iowa going to college and jumped straight into the pros after your high school year? Or do you wish like it would have played out how it played out? Did you need to, did you, did you actually need to go to Iowa for that to, you know what I'm saying? For that to kind of manifest the way that it did. I I think I could have did it, but I don't think the connections were there at that age. Okay. To be able to do it with the agent and staying at the agent's house, Aaron Tellum's house, and you know, with the, with the connections of that, I don't think it was there at at the age of sixteen. So it was like kind of just jumping into a ocean. I ain't know where to go with no boat. Mm-hmm. So you know, at the age when I went to college, that's where I you know started. To, my father started calling the agents. He started finding. Sonny Baccaro, he started talking to Sonny Baccaro at Adidas. And then so that's where it kind of started, the connection started happening for me to be able to have that platform to even be able to work out for the teams and, and be able to be seen. And that's crazy. So so what's your thoughts on like, I know you've been seeing like a lot of college players, you know what I'm saying? That's been like the, the wave of just doing that one and done, going into – at university for a season and then jumping straight into the pros um, because of the high school rule been taken out of the, you know what I'm saying, has been taken out to play. But I heard in the next few years that they about to get the, you know what I'm saying, the high school rule back in there because these dudes is coming out, you know what I'm saying, super polished now. That's, I think that was just the stupidest thing they could have did to stop guys coming out of high school. Um, you know, when you're when all your superstars and, and all-stars were, were guys out of high school, um, at that time when they stopped it. So mm-hmm. um, it's just kind of weird why they stopped it. We know why they stopped it. Um, you know, too too many young black athletes uh, getting the money too young and, and, and too long of an age, I think is why they stopped it. Mm-hmm. Um, and they all in business with college, you know, so I think guys continue to one and done. Um, you know, can continue finding resources and different leagues out there. Um, you know that 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 keeps up with the college. You know, because college is just another league, another platform. Mm-hmm. You know, but if you balling and you got the right connections, you know, you, you they gonna find you. Yeah. So with the G League and leagues like OTE coming around now, do you think college will kind of drop in popularity for like basketball players? I think they do. I think they will. I think they should. Um, unless they start paying the guys, um, you know, they kind of brushed it under the table, said they paying us, but they not paying us. They letting us get money, um, in Off college, but they're not, not paying us. Mm-hmm. So, um, it's still a trick. Um, I think it's one of the biggest slave trades around still, you know, having athletes, you know, work and do these things and, and, and guys, make billions of dollars and, and don't share it at all. I think it's just extremely, extremely amazing that it's still happening. Um, so 
I, I don't like colleges, um, you know, because at, at the end of the day, the athlete goes three, four years. Uh, the only thing he is is in debt, you know, um, <clears throat> uh, financial aid. Some guys get it. Some guys don't, you know, and I'm in debt. You know, now I got to go get an apartment. I got, you know, it just, it just doesn't make sense um, sometimes. If you're not going to be an engineer or a doctor or a lawyer, mm -hmm. I don't think athletes, you know, should, if they're not getting paid. If you were coming up into the NBA, like today's day and age, like right now, would you have gone the college route or would you have gone to the G League? Would you have gone to the overtime league? Would you have picked another route, gone overseas? No, I probably would still go college. I would still go college just because it's not really um, a certainty or a, a concrete it's not a concrete league yet. The, the overtime league is just kind of two teams playing each other. Um, it's not really a league yet, and they can't play G League teams. So the kids kind of just, you know, lost playing each other. Um, I don't know who's working them out or who's, you know, what, what's what with that. But I probably still would go college, one and done. I really don't like getting lost in the sauce. Guys, young guys <clears throat> going to compete with grown men trying to get drafted from the G league either. Um, you know, it's tough to be the grown man, no matter, you know, mm -hmm. what league you're in. And then you got opportunities where you can brand yourself. Now you can make a little cash for yourself before you actually go into college and while you're in college too. So it's a, it's a little different narrative too. Now that where you can, now you can make money um, while being in school. Mm -hmm. And I think that's amazing. Um, they let guys do their branding. Um, you know, that's one platform. I think they, they, that, that was good for guys. Um, you know, it should be paid by the colleges and platforms, mm -hmm. um, like licensing checks and stuff. So it's just like sponsorships, guys getting shoe deals and different things. And, um, you know, they should let us do it, but players now need to get more smart on where they're going and strategically map out their branding and their, their brand. I think that's what um, more or less the, the athletes should get smarter on mm -hmm. planting yeah. out their brand yeah. and where they're going and attacking the, the businesses around them, uh, you know, to build that platform or that marketing that's a good company for us. And we can start a marketing company for college players. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I saw, I saw some colleges are even starting to hire like branding and marketing coaches for their athletes. So they're trying to get the money. They get they're trying to get the money right back. You know, <laughs> yeah. they smart. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, they yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they trying right, to but, they um, trying to get a step ahead of the game. We'll move on from college, right? You start your NBA career. Statistically, not the dream start anyone really wants. But you know, like you said, you entered the league at seventeen, which is something that doesn't happen anymore. So, what's kind of going through your mind at that time when you're having these years that maybe you didn't? perform at the level you wanted to perform at you're having you know all the internet haters you know talk about you in a negative way and you're seeing all that you're hearing all that what's kind of going through your mind on that and like what steps did you take to make that improvement because after those few years you had you made consistent jumps every year after that yeah so a lot of people kind of don't know the story on kind of what took me so long but I got drafted my first year was it was really good my first year was great I was behind some 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 major major guys getting minutes, getting buckets. Um, you know, Bobby Fields, Eddie Jones. You know, so it really wasn't uh, Dale Curry, um, David Wesley. Man, it was it was some gunners there. We we was tough in the East. So me and me and Brad Miller were the rookies there. So we were getting minutes, ten minutes, five minutes, eight minutes. Um, everything was going good. So that summer, I ended up breaking my foot playing in the summer league. Uh, my right foot stress fracture. Um, so I was out that, that summer really didn't play a lot that summer too much. Uh, you know, came back in about eight weeks, season started training camp, broke my foot again. Oh, so now I'm sitting on a, on IR eight more weeks and go back in, fix the screw, do some other stuff. So I get traded in the trade with Bobby, uh, with um, Eddie Jones, Anthony Mason to Miami. So now I'm just kind of getting back on rehab, trying to get back, 
Pat Riley, I finally get back my third year, third year coming training camp, looking good behind Eddie Jones still. Um, he's still always behind Eddie Jones, but I was playing good. Pat Riley liked me. Everything was going good. Broke my foot one more time. Okay. Yeah, so now, man. yeah. So now I broke my foot only because the doctors messed up and didn't put a screw back in the second time. Fucking doctors. And so now, so now the third time you go back in, they put a screw, do a bone graft. I'm out 12 weeks now. So I'm out 12 weeks. That's almost the whole season. I come back maybe like three weeks before the third year. Um, played good. Ended up getting, uh, I think that was getting traded again to Cleveland. I think I got traded with some other trade with me, somebody else, Brian Grant, some other people to Cleveland. Now I'm 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 back in I'm I'm back now, back healthy. Played two three weeks last season. Played in the summer league again that summer. Foot doing good, and I just start balling in Cleveland that fourth year. I come in playing behind the bench. I'm playing behind Lamar Murray. Um, I think that was Wesley Person, uh, the shooter, Chuck Person's son, uh, mm -hmm, brother. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I was coming off the bench. I was playing about 10, 15 minutes maybe. I led the league that year in points per minute, I think, and that's where I always came in, you know, always ready. No matter what, they put me in two minutes, 30 seconds. Now, you put me in two minutes, I'm going to get 12 points. You know, and guys are just looking like, man, so you put this guy in, can't put him in 10 minutes. You know, so they would put me in here and they'd take me out and they'd put me in there, take me out. You know, so all that year I kind of was playing here, playing there, playing here, playing there. So about the last 10 games, I think Lamar Murray got hurt and I just went bananas. They started me. I went crazy. I think I was averaging like 25, 26 points the last 10 games. I ended up signing my contract, signed five years, 35 mil. And that was it. My fifth year, I came in starting, started averaging like 24 points. Average 24 points. Uh, I think that was my fifth year that whole season. Then here come LeBron. That sixth year, LeBron came, drafted LeBron. We already knew he was getting number one put. We were knew they were going to pick LeBron. It was just a matter of what ball they got, what pick. So they got the first pick. So when LeBron came, everything was good. We were rolling. LeBron was in, you know, because I knew the young fella wasn't ready to, you know, win us a championship, you know. So I figured, shit, I'm going to just keep doing me. I really don't care who on the floor. I'm going to just do me no matter what. You ain't got to run me no plays. You ain't got to do nothing. I will get – I will as soon as you touch the ball, trust me, I will get mine. I will get everything be good. So, LeBron – so, I had that attitude already. I'm already averaging 25, 26. So, I had already knew. They hired Paul Silas, the coach I coached with before back in Charlotte, which we really didn't kind of butt heads back in Charlotte a little bit. So, next thing you know, we playing. Everything's good. Season rolling good. We having a good season. And next thing you know – Coach started kind of taking me out the game. You know, I'm just balling. I mean, young fella, first two games, three games, he got like 10 points, 12 points. You know, he's playing good. He's shooting the ball. Just, uh, you know, he's just rookie. You know how it is when you're a rookie. You just ain't ready. You know what I mean? You get your little 12, 15 points. You're paying 30 minutes, but you just don't know how to score yet. Mm -hmm. But they wanted him to score 20, 30 points. So Rick just I'm 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 eating it. I'm scoring 20, 30 points. We winning games, but it ain't LeBron winning games. It's Ricky winning games. So I, you know, I kind of analyzed it afterwards, but next thing you know, Paul Silas takes me out and he's like, he's I'm taking now, he take me out. I'm like, what's what's up, coach? He like, man, you gotta stop kind of yelling at the young fella. And I'm like, what are you talking about? So I go back on the bench. I I ain't think nothing of none of it. I'm gonna go back on the bench and Next thing you know, I'm not in the game. I'm not going back in the game. That whole game, he didn't put me back in the game. So I'm like, okay, all right, something going on. So I didn't say nothing. I ain't tripped. I go back the next game, same thing, getting buckets. I think I came out, scored 15 points in the first quarter. I'm pissed, okay? <laughs> I scored like 15 points in the first quarter. He takes me out again. And I'm like, coach, what's going on? And he like, 
you keep yelling at the young fella. He said the same exact thing. So I sat down next to him. I said, so what, what you mean yelling at the young fella? What, what are you talking about? You can't cuss him out. I'm like, coach, what are you talking about? <laughs> he was really tripping, right? Like, I'm, 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 I'm thinking, I'm tripping. I'm like, maybe I'm, maybe I'm on one. I don't know. Maybe I'm tripping. Maybe I'm too aggressive when I talk or something. I'm just questioning myself now. Like, what is he talking about? You know, just like you said, pick Craig, Craig. You know, come off the pick and roll. That's what you're gonna do. You dive. You hit him with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get your bucket. Yeah. I really don't know how to talk soft in the game. You know, so maybe I don't know. I was talking to maybe I was talking too aggressive. I don't know what I was. So I wait. He didn't put me back in the second game. So I called my agent. I said, look, hey, we need to have a meeting because um, this ain't working out. Something going on. I don't know. He's taking me out the game. He's put me in. He's taking me out. And he's like, well, they saying you're being detrimental to the team. Wow. And I'm like, what the fuck does that mean? And I'm like, <laughs> detrimental to the team. Wow. You know what? What, what does that mean? I, uh, I don't get it, you know, because everybody I know on the team, so I, I, don't, I don't understand. <laughs> you know, we winning games. I don't know. I don't know. I didn't know what he was saying, but my agent, you know, he probably thinking, ah, Rick Trippett and all this. So we call a meeting. We call a meeting. He like, Rick, they decided they want to try to suspend you for a game or two. So I'm like, what? what you mean for what like for what like what you mean like now i'm really tripping like what you mean suspend me they like you being detrimental to the team you've been cussing lebron out they say you've been cussing lebron out so i'm like okay we go have a meeting with the the coach and all the shit and all the shit and we in there he's like rick you know i know you from charlotte and this and that and this and that and you've been cussing the young fella out and that's not what we need for this team to grow and I'm just like, Paul, what are you talking about? Like, when did I cut, cuss the young fella out? I'm kind of confused because I never knew when I cussed the young fella out. And he said, did this certain play and this certain play? And I'm like, well, why don't we just do this? The owner in the team, the GM in the team, my agent in, in there in the meeting. And, and so I'm like, why don't we just call LeBron in here and ask him? And then, <laughs> so my agent looked like, huh. He looked at the GM like, yeah, let's call LeBron in here and ask him. Man, they go get LeBron. LeBron don't even know this going on. Okay. Wow. They go get LeBron for <laughs> practice. LeBron come in. He kind of look. As soon as he come in, he look at me like, what the fuck going on? I'm like, man, quit. <laughs> so he sit down. And so they get to talking. Okay, LeBron, this is why we in here. Man, look, I say, hold on, Bron. They say, I just interrupt him. Bron, they say, I cussed you out. He say, huh? You ain't never cussed me out. I said, they keep saying I cussed you out and I'm yelling at you or some shit like that. He say, you ain't cussed me out. I don't know. I don't know what, what they talking about. I got up and left. I ain't even finished the whole meet. I got up and left. My agent was like, come back. I, after that, I got traded. <laughs> so after that, I went to my agent and said, man, we got to go. So that's how I ended up. That's the story of all the LeBron, all the bullshit. So I had to roll. So it was all Paul Silas, though. That's crazy. That's the politics. That's the yeah. politics in the business, though. Yep. Yeah. Straight yeah. up. Yeah. 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 So from that's there, it. from there, you went to Boston. Then um, I didn't think you did a few years in Boston. Then you went to Cleveland for a year. Went back yeah. to Miami. Went to Boston, then I went to Boston, went to Minnesota. Uh huh. Miami. Then that's when I ran in a uh, low dog, low dog. <laughs> <laughs> then after Minnesota, after Minnesota went to Miami. Mm -hmm. And then Minnesota was amazing, man. It was cold, but uh, it was amazing. Um, you know, that's that's where I met my new wife actually. So that was a good that was a good stop. Um, you know, so it it was freezing though, so it was nothing to do but play ball. You know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, guys was together on the team, man. And, you know, going to Minnesota, that's where I, I, I learned about the work ethic. And I thought I was working hard till I met KG, you know. And, and when I met KG, my work ethic just went out the roof. You know, you talk about a guy that just every play, every game, every practice, 
I mean, don't sit out of practice. We on the back to back. He might play forty minutes. He won't sit out, low. I mean, they tell they they might say, "Low, go sub ticket." He like, nigga, go sub yourself. <laughs> you know, you like what? <laughs> and, you know, he like what? <laughs> And, you know, you got to, they got to bring the GM down to get he need to, to sit calm down, down. Yeah. man. And this old Kevin Mateo walking down. Hey, ticket, go sit your ass down, man. You can just play the back to back forty five minutes. Go sit down, man. He like, won't you get out here so I can bone your ass, you bad <laughs> ankle? <laughs> won't you get out here so I can bone you? Oh man, I'm like. Get out. And I'm on I'm on the sideline. I done took the sub. I'm like, oh man, it's real out here. Let me sub back in yeah. then. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Woo. So I mean, it was just amazing. I know Craig, I mean, just you probably coming in as a rookie seeing that. I know it just after you went somewhere else, I know your work ethic was just out the roof. Yeah, it was. Like even even the time when I went to to the clips, like I made sure I tried to be the first person there, done with my lift, done with my shots, like just being ready for practice. So like that, like it started from from there, from Minnesota. It started in Minnesota. Cause not only that, it was just like, yo, it's so cold out here, but we gotta be the first. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And now we gotta have them donuts warm too. Oh, oh man. Man. I had them donuts warm. And I, let me tell you about that time. The time we got in trouble, he came in one day and he said, Oh, so y'all been getting the donuts delivered? Uh, <laughs> just just like that. Oh, y'all been getting the donuts delivered through the through a through the brand new Krispy Kreme boxes in the trash. I told y'all to go get the warm donuts. Don't be having people yeah. dropping food like cool snitching yeah. on us, bruh. I oh, can feel man. them. Man, delivered, man. Man. <laughs> and I know that was part of my welcome to the league moment. So, Trick Track, what was your welcome to the league moment? <laughs> oh, man. My welcome to the league moment was the same thing, man. I mean, imagine the team I had, though. Anthony Mason, Derek Coleman, J.R. Reed, oh. Eddie Jones, Eldon Campbell. Eldon Campbell. Man, these Eldon. guys, I mean, oh my God. Anthony Mason might have went out every city. Rest in peace, boy. He might have went out every city we went to. And I mean, yeah, so having the donuts, the bags, and don't let these fools call you at three in the morning. You ain't got the condom for them. <laughs> It's over. I learned the hard way. <laughs> <laughs> Four o'clock in the morning. Real. You got some rubbers? No, I ain't got no rubbers. Well, you better go to the stove. <laughs> oh, for real? It's four in the morning, man. <laughs> All right, bro. Don't come around. Oh, but it was so tough, though, because, I mean, I didn't pay for nothing my whole rookie year. Man, they took care of me, food, whatever we needed. They took care of us, man. So that's what it was all about. Wow. You know, being that, you know what I'm saying, you never really got that um, that stick in, in one, like, you know what I'm saying, in one situation, in one team in the league. You was kind of bouncing around being that journeyman. Um, what's that mentality like? You know what I'm saying? Just going into that, you know, having those short stances with these teams, these short stays with these teams, but knowing, you know what I'm saying, um, the quality that you bring, you know what I'm saying, to the game offensively and defensively. Like, what's that mentality just being that journeyman in the league? Um, you know, that's a good question, man. It, it was I, – I, I would have loved to actually be in, a, in one place where I could grow and actually, you know – Everybody could see, you know, my worth on, 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 you know, my game and what I brought to the game. But, you know, I looked at it like, you know, I could, I, I was a Robin, you know, to the everybody's Batman, um, you know, just coming in, you know, helping that top notch guy, you know, take that pressure off that guy. And, and that's how I looked at my job, you know, because my first two years in the league, 
you know, the, the, the vets told me, um, you know, you get traded in a heartbeat, you know, so it ain't really where you at. It's, it's how you perform. Mm -hmm. And no matter how you perform, somebody else like you. So I didn't take getting traded, you know, the different teams. I didn't, I didn't take it in a bad way. I took it in a good way that, Hey, somebody else want me. Somebody else want me to come in and, and, and be me and do what I want to do. Um, the good thing about, you know, the journeyman in, in my career was some of the places I wanted to be traded. Um, I wanted to go play with different guys, you know, like, like I was playing with LeBron, you know, and I could have sucked it up and just been that and, you know, but that just wasn't my character, you know, so suck it up and to play behind a rookie, you know, that's now the greatest guy in the game. Uh, for me, I, I just couldn't do it at, at that moment. You know, now if it would have been somewhere where LeBron is old and he's established and this and that, now I'm going to play and rock with the guy all day, you know, but I would rather go get traded over here uh, and, and play with Paul Pierce. Um, somebody's established, somebody I know we trying to win a championship, somebody to know the culture and what we want. Um, and, and when I got traded from Boston, I wanted to go play with KG. Um, you know, so, and then when I got traded from there, I wanted to go try to win a ring, you know, so in Miami, it, so I was just kind of, um, you know, yeah, moving, moving. I was moving cause I wanted to, um, but I, but I could have stayed in those cities. I, I just, some stuff I just didn't, I, it wasn't me. It wasn't in my character. I know you were saying, you know what I'm saying? Your first few years, you was like understudy behind, uh, Eddie Jones. That was one of my, that was one of my all-time favorite players uh, back in the day. Just that finger roll, you know what I'm saying? That that jelly that he was that he was bringing out. He could punch on, he could punch on damn near anybody that was coming through that lane. But he would just hit him with that finger roll. So having him as an understudy, you got a young LeBron James, you had the young Paul Pierce, you had the young KG. And you had the young D Wade. Like, what is what was it like in just having those different greats? You know what I'm saying? Um, to kind of like bring out that fire in yourself. I, I, I noticed you saying like, you know, your work ethic kind of picked up by just being around KG and how he was just on it 24 seven. Like, what are some of the other qualities that you was able to pick up because? You play with a lot of great guys in that position. And as the league started to like transform to fit like your style of a player, a two, three, you know what I'm saying? Like that in between positions, you know what I'm saying? Like what are some of those great qualities that you was able to like, you know, take from, you know, add your own flair to them, like playing in those in those great years with some of the some of the greatest players of all time, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Um, you know, like I, I took some from all of them. Um, you know, each one of them has, you know, different characters and, and different qualities and, you know, but one of the main things I took up from all of them was, uh, their professionalism. They're not being rattled, you know, no matter, no, no matter what's going on, always being professional, always, you know, just kind of doing the right thing, bringing that model player. Uh, that's one of the main, main things that I got, you know, playing with those guys is being really, really professional on what you do. Each one, like I say, give you the qualities. KG with the work ethic. Um, you know, D-Wade with the, with the ball handling and the different angles, mm -hmm. you know, he used coming off pick and rolls. You know, it, it was a special trait, him using different angles. He almost created the word snake. He you know, did. Now he snake he did. Roll. He did. You know, that was d Wade favorite movie. <clears throat> yeah. So, um, you know, different qualities. You know, Paul Pierce step back. But still create that separation. Uh, being misunderstood by the media, um, is there something that you wish they knew or understood better? Because, you know, they started to kind of label you, especially kind of after um, that the Cleveland situation, um, some people saying you never lived up to the hype or a missed opportunity. What would you like to tell them? 
or what would you like to let them know in that you that you know that they don't know you know on the other side of things because it's always two to a story and i feel like they always get to push their narrative but we really want to hear from your your side of things and your narrative yeah well you know craig to answer that question very deep question um you know but my question would where did it come? yeah um you know that would be my question that's the only thing I really would want to know. Uh, where where did it come from? Um, you know, because we are misunderstood. Um, and if it's not to um, certain people's likings of a upbringing or where they're from, um, no one's trying to fix what's going on. Um, it's just uh, paint the picture they paint uh, for that player. So, you know, because he could have a lot of stuff going on. So, yeah. I don't know. You know, my my thing is I just – I'm just a, a misunderstood book that people just don't pick up. You know, you hear about the book, see the book. It might look scary, but, um, you know, you never pick it up. You never read it. Um, so, you never know, you know, the Davis too. Um, you know, you, you become my teammate or to, to I know you. Uh, but if we could have a vote of all my teammates, the votes would be different than all my GMs and presidents, majority of them. Yeah. Um, you know, so if my coaches could vote, you know, and it wasn't the GMs and, and guys that never played the game, uh, never came where I came from, uh, you know, never went through anything that I've went through, it's, it's, it's tough. You just become, we just become misunderstood. A lot of guys, you know, having problems and coaches see problems, see what's going on, but they worried about is the performance on the floor, which, you know, I get it. I, I get it. You, you pay these guys a lot of money uh, to perform. Yeah. Why not help them off the court so they can be the better player on the court? It's confusing. So, um, you know, we end up still – you know, with, with not a lot of education on, on certain things, financial literacy, uh, things, you know, to help us grow. Yeah. Uh, you know, my family ain't never been a millionaire, and I'm pretty sure all the guys in the league, families ain't never been millionaires either. Yeah. Um, so, but now look at the owners and the GMs. They family's been millionaires. They've had financial literacy. They've Generations. Had great representation. They've had... Um, you know, all this stuff. So generations um, on generations. Yeah. You know, so it's just mm-hmm. about changing the narrative, getting that information out there as we get it and go through it. And we tell our testimony and our story. Absolutely. And looking Absolutely. back on all of this, is there anything you kind of wish you knew that you know now, or would you have like changed anything? Oh man. Um, you know, definitely wouldn't change the, the story. Uh, just would change some of the knowledge um, that I knew to maneuver around some of the things that I need to maneuver around. Um, you know, so, you know, the life has, has me to this point where I can teach and, and grow my kids on whatnot. So the life is good, but if I could have just maneuvered a little more around certain things that I knew were coming better, faster, I don't know how to say that, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, cause we all get to the point where we need to be, you know, but, we could be better in that space at an early age or while mm-hmm. we're in our prime, mm-hmm. you know, doing the right things. Yeah. I think, I think, uh, it kind of just comes with the experience, but, um, I think that, you know, we're in a different time and we are just in a different space, just not, not only with the game of basketball, but just in life in general, you know what I'm saying? Ever since the pandemic, a lot of these elephants that's been, you know, elephants in these rooms or in these certain situations and circumstances in life, they're no longer elephants anymore, right? right. Like people right. are starting to talk about the mental health and what it's like to be in a mind, just a regular person's mind right. in a 24 right. hour day, just sitting and dealing right. with your own thoughts and your own, you know what I'm saying? Just ways on how you deal with certain levels of stress and things of that nature. I think the pandemic brought all of that to the top 
you know what I'm saying, brought all of that to the forefront. So now you kind of mm-hmm. seeing it change with, you know, just the way that they handling players now, right? right. Just making sure right. that the mental health is tapped in, making sure, you know, how is their family and living situation and everything like that. So I believe that it's starting, you know what I'm saying, to make that turn to where, you know, these general managers, these coaches, these people are that that hold these high positions um, in these establishments, they are starting to look at it from the player's point of view. You know what I'm saying? And I think those just by having these conversations and creating these platforms like we're doing here to just bring a little bit more attention to those stories. The pandemic has brought everybody, you know, to an even playing field, but to to have athletes, you know, start understanding, you know, the power that we have, I think mm-hmm. is is what where where we at right now and, and why we're getting chained. Um, you know, guys, we still figuring it out, but we still figuring out how powerful we are. If we do it together and what we can achieve, I think, you know, guys are starting to see that. You know, I don't know if we'll keep going more and more and more, you know, but but I think guys are awake and using platforms now to enlighten other guys and, and just being together. I think that's the main part. Looking back on your whole career, do you have any like specific favorite moments that you kind of look back and remember on? You know, seeing me being drafted at 17 and, and you know, being able to endure, um, you know, the ups and downs. And just, I'm just thankful for the whole process. And um, all of it was amazing for me. What were your favorite trash talk moments? <laughs> oh yeah, man, definitely, probably GP, GP would get you. Uh, <laughs> you know, not playing against KG. I used to just watch KG. I never was this position, so I just used to always watch my be nervous. You know, so uh, man, that was some of the times. You know, I really didn't have too many. The older guys was. You know, my era, guys talking shit, uh, yeah. Jamal Mashburn, yeah. you know, Jerry mm. Stackhouse, uh, JRM guys, you know, Dale Curry, them guys was the ones talking that mess. And, and guys didn't even know it till you, till you start playing against them old school guys. Every, every, every little game, I try to get somebody going. One of my, uh, one of my favorite memories uh, looking back was, it was the first time that the Seattle team had moved to OKC. And that was like the first game in OKC that we had played Westbrook and KD. I don't think is I don't think it was more so trash talk as it was just like what we did just to motivate each other. You know what I'm saying? What me and you used to do to just motivate each other. Like our Clippers team was beyond trash. We was real like boo boo. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> yeah, for real. So, we was just doing, you know what I'm saying, what we had the opportunity to do. And this was early in the season. Our team was uh, going through a, like a lot of injuries. I know Baron Marcus Camby was going through a lot of injuries. And then, just for us as rookies, you know, it was DeAndre Jordan, Eric Gordon, who was, you know, still making that transition. They were still, you know what I'm saying, making that transition of pro basketball, just the lifestyle and everything. So one, okay, so it's me and you out there at the one and two. I'm guarding uh, Westbrook, you guarding, you guarding KD. And it's like every single time it's like they on the right side of the floor. So basically I'm like, man, I'm finna, I'm finna push up on him. I know he trying to make that entry pass. You're like, well, I got him three-quarter then. And we, you know what I'm saying? We finna lock these young motherfuckers down. You know what I'm saying? Like, but it was just, but it was just, it was, that was just how we, we was like that in practice. We was like that, you know what I'm saying? Outside the basketball court, we was just, you know what I'm saying? We just had that, that energy. It was just like this at all the time. You know what I'm saying? And it was just those moments. It was like, you know what I'm saying? We finna welcome them to the NBA. This is real basketball right here. You know what I'm saying? For sure. And that's exactly what we did. We ended up winning that game and, you know what I'm saying? That was one of those that was what that was one of those moments for me that was like, not only am I at this level, like I'm really I can hold my own at this level. You know what I'm saying? And really then it was just like 
a lot of these dudes was kind of getting timid when you start to talk. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, when you really start to talk, it's like they hold they understanding. Yeah, they hold understanding is kind of thrown yeah. off a little bit. So I'm like, okay, win, lose, a draw. You know what I'm saying? Win, lose, a draw. I know I'm going to go out. You know what I'm saying? Whether it's two minutes or 20 minutes, I'm going to talk my shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and I'm going to back it up for sure. So. That was, that was one of my, you know what I'm saying, enjoyable, you know what I'm saying, trash talking moments from you. Mike, did you get your trash talking from Ricky? Yes, sir. Oh, I learned a lot. <laughs> man, I learned a lot from Trick Track, man. Just being on the oh. end of that bench, you know what I'm saying? Like, I learned to, like just how to call out plays, like off the first pass, you know what I'm saying? He's like, what play is that? Like, what play is that? You know what I'm saying? Just testing me the whole game to see if I'm paying attention. You know what I'm saying? Like I learned a lot. Like the trash talking for sure. I picked it up, picked it up like that. But mm-hmm. another instant was just like just being active in the game. You know what I'm saying? Just being active. You know what I'm saying? Supporting. Yeah, it, sup- you, you, it was in you already. Yeah. Activated. Yeah. It was just. It was just. It was just. He seen that. He seen it in me, and he was just like, "Man, look." He like look at these point guards. Like look how they bringing the ball up the court. He was just putting. He was just like. Making me aware of it, you know what I'm saying? Aware of certain things, and I'm like, "Oh, okay, they playing in the backcourt. They playing with they fool. Like they playing just, with. they just playing with the ball back there." I'm like, "Man, they right. better knock that off, because if I get in there, I'm taking it. <laughs> I'm taking it." He like, "Yeah, see, that's a." He like, "You off the leash, you know what I'm saying?" He like, "You know, I learned coming from a starter mm-hmm. uh, to being off the bench. You know, you just just watching that group in front of you." As they they watching the game, but they not watching their position and and realizing game. So, you know, focusing in on that on that game and, and really studying it while you on the bench. Because when he call your number, you better be ready. And you got yeah, this. Yeah. You got this amount of room to make a mistake. You know what I'm saying? No, 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 <laughs> so you no, better no, been uh yeah, yeah right back right back to the sideline like we go. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, I got to hear the trash talking up close for the big three this year. For week two, I had had Mike mic'd up, but you could hear like everyone talking. So I just heard like all the trash talking. It was hysterical. You hear it, uh. <laughs> and I just remember, Mike, you were ruthless, ruthless to uh, what's his name? Isaiah Austin. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ruthless yeah. to him. You were just like, number one pick this, number one pick that. Ruthless. Me I that, mean, me the big three is just special in its own way. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and three on three basketball is like trash talking is like one of the main things that has to happen in three on three basketball. That's like that's the closest thing to street basketball. Like in one on ones, it get crazy. You know what I'm right. saying? With the trash yeah. talking. So mm-hmm. yeah. three on three is, a, you know, what I'm saying that's a smaller version. It's pretty much like that. That one on one. You know what I'm saying? Right. Just dominating your your position. So the trash talking is at an all time high, and I love it. All time high because you get it's the really all time challenge. <laughs> well, for sure, for sure, for five sure, for five, sure. You get to rest a little bit. Uh huh. Three on three, it's it's live all the time. But yeah, man, that's that's a part of the game that I like. You know what I'm saying? I like locking in. I mean, you kind of like I said earlier, you kind of notice a whole lot of posture change when you get yeah. to talking you know what i'm saying when you get to talking that talk and then just being yeah. able to back it up too that's yeah. something yeah. different yeah. like a lot of people so can talk it but not but a lot of people walk. can come back and double mm-hmm. back like oh yeah i'm nice with the rock too right, right. you know right. what i'm saying and then they get in there trying too hard yeah doing yeah. too much yeah. and they ain't ready for us okay so that triple double attempt you know what I'm saying? To where it's yes. like, you know, now they they cushioning the stats. They letting the, mm-hmm. the point guards come down and get these rebounds and everything like that. Um, but I wanted to talk about, you know what I'm saying, that that that, that triple-double attempt and just the, the backlash that you got for that. I mean... If 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 they know trick, they know that you know what I'm saying that was that was all in you know what I'm saying a playful spirit of the game, but it's right. also challenging what they consider a rebound. It's also cha- 
you know what I'm saying, like challenging the basketball brains on that aspect. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. So so go ahead right. and just, you know what I'm saying, go ahead and kind of give your uh, point of view of where you was at with that. You know, that, that's everybody know me. You know, that's 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 why I got my name wrong way, Ricky. So, <laughs> um, you know, hey, I take it. But, um, you know, just me coming, you know, from the park, man, I'm always fun in the game, but never too serious. So that game right there, it was – I was about, I think, three or four games away from a triple-double. Whether well, it was one rebound, it was one assist, it was like the fourth game in a row I was away from a triple-double. Mm. So I'm got like 32, 11, and 9, you know, 35, 9, and 11. You know, so this is like third, fourth game. I'm like, they yell out from the bench – about three minutes left in the game. Rick, you need one rebound. <laughs> and, oh, I look at the clock. I'm three minutes. I'm good. Yeah, here we go, right? <laughs> Man, next thing you know, I look at the clock. Shots going up. No rebounds. Nothing. Next thing you know, I'm like, dang, can't get the rebound. I done tried <laughs> to get every rebound. So I done sitting there, and I'm like, you know, I am I going to throw it all the way down there and go chase it down? You know, they already telling me no shot, no shot. We already up by 15. So I, I, I can't stop. And my like, I'm going to get this triple double. I'm going to go the backboard, get that joker, and just be cool. <laughs> <laughs> now, mind you, I'm only, you know, I'm only 19, 20 years old. You know, so my thoughts right there was like, yeah. Let's do that, right? <laughs> so I did it. Foul. As soon as I did it, I threw it off the thing, got it, boy, they fouled the shit out of me. Right? <laughs> as soon as they fouled me, I was like, ooh, damn, I probably should have did that one. <laughs> the crowd was like, ooh, what the hell? <laughs> it went the wrong way, okay? So, uh, no, it went the wrong way. But really, I was chasing my triple double, you know? That's all I can think about, man. Chase my triple double. So, you know, a week later, they didn't give me the triple double. They took it from me. They told me I didn't have. It. Uh, told me it was on the other side of the basket, and you can't <laughs> get a rebound for the other side of the basket. That's and a defensive well, rebound. I made it. I say, well, if I'd have made it, you would have counted it. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So how that ain't a shot? But, okay, politics. You know, and two weeks later, Bobby Sura do the same thing. And they give it to him. They give it to him. Mm -hmm. They might have took it from him. I don't know if they took it from him or not. But they gave it to him. And they didn't give him all that backlash like they gave me. Dang. They slid it under the table. But that's where it go, you know. Mm, you know, it was a mistake by Bobby, you know. Ricky wasn't a mistake. He meant he did that on purpose. <laughs> you, know. <laughs> you know, so so that's where it is, and you know that's where a lot of misunderstanding come from from the game. They like you selfish, but you know you look at this twenty year old kid. You know, I'm chasing the triple double. Am I selfish? I'm playing the game. I don't know. You know, but. Looking back, you know, now it's selfish. You know, it's not a team thing to do. You know, but still in my mind, coming from where I'm from, yeah, I got me a triple-double. Yeah, Ain't nobody yeah. tripping. You know, but, you know, so it always, you know, how you brought up and what people think about it. And everybody chasing triple-doubles. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because, like, even talk about, like, just the different in times. Like, now, like, certain guys – will literally let you get that rebound. Back in the day, I felt like I couldn't even get a one rebound from Marcus Camby. He ready to take my head off, and we on the same team. Yeah, not at all. You know why? Because back in the day, we had role players. Mm -hmm. You know, and role players, that's how he ate. Yeah. Once he set yeah. screen, he and got them rebounds. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And yeah. that's what he did to make the team better. So if he didn't get the rebound or that little guy got the rebound on film, he going to get in trouble. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 And now yeah. he ain't going to eat. You know, but nowadays it's ball. It's no role players. You know, if yeah. it's a role player, he's like, what, a shooter? Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. that's their role. Yeah. So, yeah. 
um, you know, that's 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 the difference. That's the difference in in, in that one. What uh, what advice would you give to the kids early on about how to treat your body as far as eating habits and mentality? Because as you see, I know you changed your style of eating and different things like that. So I just want you to elaborate and you know what I'm saying let the let the kids know uh, you know um, the certain things that uh, that that they should do at an early age. You know, you know. health is wealth, man. Um, you know that's what it's all about, and, and it's a mentality. Um, like you want to be the best on that court. Um, you know, I want to feel, you know, and, and you know, that it's truth. It is. You are what you eat. Uh, and and it's, it's, that's, that's big. That's huge. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, just, just finding out, you know, through my foundation, diabetes and the diabetes research about where the diabetes and cancer stuff is coming from, it was from the food. And the waters in our body, not even aware of what what we're doing in our body, what we're putting in our body, you know. For most most athletes, if you're not putting in that right stuff for your body, you're not gonna have the right output. And now that you know, if I I'm, I turn, you know, vegan, that I can. So I went vegan and why I went plant based, um, rather than eating meat. That word right there kind of reminds me of poison. Uh, because if you want me to consume all this protein and the highest element of nutrition for the food is like an avocado, three grams of protein, protein. then why do I need all these, you know, and the steak is like protein, you know, it's a hundred gram, 30, 40, 50 grams of protein. Yeah. You know, why do I yeah. need all so many protein, yeah. you know, yeah. so. Just being able to educate the young guys at an early age, health problems, not even on the court, but just health problems, you know, as they turn 40, 50, high blood pressure, all that stuff, you know, is a big factor in staying in shape and endurance and, you know, muscle fatigue and recovery. All right. Moving, moving forward from that, I have a secret question. We have a script going on, so we know, like, how to keep track of everything. But I literally on this one just wrote Jordan's secret question because I didn't want Mike or Craig to know this one. But you played with both of them at a young age as these guys were like rookies or new to the league. You got to have some like embarrassing stories on these guys. You got to have some funny stories to tell. We got to hear it. Oh, man. Um, I mean, we all got some crazy stories, man. But... <laughs> oh, man. Um, I can really share on the camera, but... <laughs> Yeah, definitely keep it like kid friendly. Everything's fun. <laughs> we always having fun and vibing, man. And, uh, you know, the guys are just fun, man. We always just having fun, always. I'll I'll I'll, I'll say one. I'll say one, Rick. When um, I had I missed out on a rookie duty, and and you guys had me practice in my jersey and my tights. <laughs> <laughs> The whole practice. So I'm literally in a in tights, and I feel so bad. I had to put two tights on. So I'm like, all right, I, I'll do it. I'll do it. But I'm literally got my jersey tucked in my tights, hooping the whole hour and a half. They just laughing at me, calling me a stripper and all that. Oh, man. So that was that was that was funny. That was that was a funny one. That was a good one. That was a good one. Oh, shit. They're calling me junk in the trunk. Look, all that. Junk in the trunk. <laughs> <laughs> so that one, man, that was classic. Come on, Mike. You got to have one now. Oh, man. <laughs> all I know is... <laughs> My apartment was like literally like two minutes away from the practice facility. Man. So uh yeah. <laughs> that's all that's all I got to say. It was, was it, it was plenty boy. it was plenty fun moments, you know what I'm saying? The gas stop, station, you know, man, you know what I'm saying? Get a car wash while I was at it. 
You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so yeah, man, we had we had we had plenty. We had plenty moments. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, buddy. I had a, I had a few frustrating moments too because my rookie. My rookie transition little program, man, I wasn't feeling it. Like we had <laughs> we had three rookies, but you know, every time it was my turn, like Bear would just throw all my stuff in the garbage, like similar to, you know what I'm saying? What uh what KG, KG did, did, like, oh, I heard y'all was doing this. Yeah. No, nah, we wasn't that smart then to get it delivered. I wish <laughs> Like I was like, damn, why the fuck I ain't think about that? <laughs> like that would have been smooth. I probably would have got away with that. But um, like I man, I was having, I was struggling. Like every time I would bring the Krispy Kremes or the Jamba Juice in, <laughs> like every time it was my day, bearing to just take everything and just throw it straight in the garbage. Oh, right? he's sick. Bro, he's I, sick for that. Bro, he after like, bro, after the whole month. Like I, I did it. I did it like three weeks in a row. You know what I'm saying on my day. Well, you try to get them the night before. It's what? What? I did. I tried. I tried to sneak it and warm them up. I was trying to do plenty stuff, yo. I was trying to get out of it. I'm like, like <laughs> just put them in there for 20 seconds in the microwave. microwave. What? What? <laughs> we, need the, we need the red light on. I'm man. like, what you mean? What? What you mean, red light? <laughs> I was I was new I was new to that you know what I'm saying I was new to the the the, the hot light I was new to all of that you know what I'm yeah, saying like yeah. we Midwest it wasn't no Krispy Kremes you know what I'm saying like yeah. with Jamba <laughs> Juice like we don't know nothing about that so I, like I really had to take down niggas orders like Starbucks like I really had to like take down real orders like and make sure y'all got it right like ain't no caramel in here is it like. You got extra this in this in this frappuccino, right? I'm like, man, I ain't know nothing, but man, it was it was it was plenty of fun moments, bro. And that just created a better bond on the court and just yeah. personal and personal lives too. So, you know what I'm saying? We had a lot of great moments. So this is a new one. We haven't done this one yet. I think his Craig or Mike came up with the idea of it. We're calling it the give a dog a bone segment. We're basically just gonna rapid fire some questions off at you. And it's very rapid fire. Um, answer or say pass. We'll get right into it. Starting with this is the Underdogs podcast. We got to know what your favorite dog breed is. German Shepherd. Favorite city to play in. Miami, L.A. Favorite musical artist. Jay Z. Favorite dunk. Team. Between the legs backwards. Mm-hmm. Favorite teammate. Man, I had too many of them. My wife. <laughs> That's the best answer. That's the best answer. (laughs) Nike or Adidas? Nike. Favorite current player? Greek Freak. Favorite all time player? Milwaukee. MJ. Biggest inspiration? My dad. Favorite childhood snack, courtesy of Craig? Yeah, come on, Mister. Come on, Mister Vegan. Come on, yeah, Mister Vegan. Vegan. What was your childhood snack? <laughs> oh, uh, man, probably the moon pie. Oh, oh, ban- the banana or the chocolate? Yeah, oh, <laughs> banana all day though. Straight up, banana. All day. yeah, banana fire, banana fire, moon pie all day. Favorite movie? City of Gods. Oh, City of Gods. Oh, that's a great one. It is. Behind the scenes, these Mike and Craig are, are giving me movies so I can get with, get it, with it a little bit. So he can do, do, diversify his cultural. His yeah. Cultural. <laughs> In other words, <laughs> so they had me watch. They had me watch The Wood last week, and then they just gave me two new recommendations. There you go. You got to watch all the Fridays. I do. Yeah. <laughs> All of them. You got to put Fridays on the list for sure. All for of them. sure, all of them. Yeah, for sure. Okay, I can do that. The, the two they gave me for this week is New Jack City and Blue Hill Avenue. Ooh, there you go. Yeah. Okay. Get with it. Uh-huh. Um, that New Jack City, West, one. it was no joke. I'm trying to tell um, you. What player do you see the most of yourself in today? I don't know. Mentality-wise, Greek free. Okay. I like that comparison. Uh, stop. Just rah, rah, rah. 
Yeah. All right. That's going to do it for the Give a Dog a Bone segment. Now Mike's up with his microwave or oven theory segment. Okay. 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 So I kind of like came up with the little concept just based off of, it's, it's a couple things, man. Like, you know what I'm saying? I, I caught my son last week, you know what I'm saying? Making noodles in the microwave. In the microwave. And I'm just like, bro, like, yes. noodles, you can't, like you can't, yeah, like you, you can't do that. Like you're supposed to make them over the oven. It ain't a cup of noodles. Yeah. They taking a pack. And putting the water in there, like, bro, this ain't oatmeal. Like, what y'all doing? So it kind of came from that, just like, just how instant this new generation they want that gratification, like instantly. You know what I'm saying? How they, how they minds are just programmed to highlights. You know what I'm saying? And that's another thing that I was like on my son about because we watching a full basketball game. And I'm like, yo, what you what you looking at? Like, what you looking for? You see, yeah. you see the play that they running. You know what I'm saying? Because he be coming at age to where it's like you got to start learning these plays. You got to know these set offenses right. and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. But he got the highlight mindset, so he only looking for the crossover, the dunk, or the yeah. three. And I'm like, bro, you got to watch the in between. You got to watch who getting it from the mid range, who picking their spots. When they get into they right. when they get into their shots and just certain different aspects of the game, so you know what I'm saying it kind of came from that that theory. Like, would you rather take the microwave or would you rather have that that oven cooked meal where you know say you got to prep it, you got to leave it in that oven for a good two three hours and it come out well prepared. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, yes. got I got I got a few little you know what I'm saying questions for you. Would you rather? Would you rather have Zion's highlight dunks or Lamelo's vision passing and ball handling type of thing? Ooh, um, well, I guess now I would where where I'm at now I would want because I done been you know, already. I felt that already. Mm-hmm. So I would want to know what it feel like to get in there and be able to just operate and, you know that's something i ain't never did okay so yeah i want up where i'm at now uh-huh. but back in the day i might have wanted to do all the dunks i might have took the zion <laughs> i mean you, you was doing the zion you know what i'm saying doing the, yeah. doing the zion. So, you was doing it. <laughs> you was doing the zion like, in game dunks too in game in game straight yeah. up straight yeah. up okay so playing in the nba now or playing when, you know what I'm saying, it was your era. Which one would you choose? Playing in my era. Mm. I got to know a why. This this game, uh, these players, he, to be able to stick, I don't think, for a long time. So I think now, back in the day, we had a quality and, a, and something that we had to, we had to do it, and that's what we did. Mm-hmm. And that's what now, to this day, I can still play. I had that quality and I was so sharp on that quality as they got too many qualities, I think. Mm-hmm. Like I can ask these guys, what's your go-to move? What you going to do when you need to score? And they don't know. They, ain't got they one. chop, 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 step back, pull, you know, bye, 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 you know, but that ain't going to work. You just got to get downhill to your favorite spot, your favorite shot. I want to play back in the day. Everything, you know what I'm saying? It's positionless, so I mean, everybody got everything, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, Absolutely. Last one for the microwave or the oven theory. We going Iceman Spingle Roll or Clay Thompson's three-point shot? Ooh. Jeez. Ooh. I'm going Iceman Spingle Roll. Because can't everybody finger roll? Yeah. That's a skill. Everybody That's a skill shoot. within hey, itself. You can learn, I can learn how to shoot. You can't but learn how to I'm do that. I'm 43 finger roll. and I still don't know how to finger roll. <laughs> no, nah, that's an art. That's a, that's a whole. <laughs> for, real, for real. That's a whole nother arch to that's, your. That's the way a he whole, was doing it too. Yeah, open up and finger roll it, or 
He was bringing it back <laughs> here. Ah, man, he could have been man, punching on something. Yeah, uh-huh. had that spin on it Ooh. and everything. He had spin on that boy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's what that's what I would want to do. The finger roll. All right, that's what's up. All right, All right so I got my little segment, and it's from your favorite rapper, Jay Z, and it's called "Overpaid or Underrated." And I'm just create an overpaid or underrated scenario from it and see which one you would go with. So since you had a stellar 12-year career with some experience overseas, would you rather have a career where you had six all-star years and all-pro and spend the rest of your career overseas? Or would you rather have started your career overseas and came over to the NBA after four years with eight years with the same NBA career? Pro All Star, you going with the six All Star years? Okay. Six All Star okay. years, just because with that, you should be able to get a hundred seats. Yeah, 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 yeah. A hundred M's for sure, for sure, for sure, for sure. So to wrap it all up, as we end all episodes, we have to ask: What is the biggest lesson you learned throughout your entire journey? My biggest thing that I learned was. Never do nothing fast or in the heat of the moment that you will regret tomorrow. Okay. That's That's a good one. So in other words, basically think about every situation. Think about when you're in the bad situation on what the result is tomorrow. But it's going to be fast. So you got to be ready. Staying on your toes. toes. Yeah, and I, I think that's that's good for the young generation too, because it's like watch what you say on social media. Yes, sir. Big watch time, that. Man. Watch just watching the image that you're putting out about yourself. That's I think at an early age yep. we don't realize yep. the image that we're putting out that yep. we're portraying yep. who we are. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Um, I think that's Absolutely. like, I think that's like, you know what I'm saying? The the, the perfect, you know what I'm saying? Exiting cue because it's like. Yeah. I mean, nowadays, these split second in the moment decisions, it could be a life or death situation. You may not be able to see that. You might not be able to see your tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. let alone um, being able to make a decision for tomorrow, you may not even see that tomorrow. Or you may be looking at, you know what I'm saying, these football numbers being sentenced in jail. You know what I'm saying? So. Like, it's a whole lot of different, you know what I'm saying, avenues that it just slow us down and just being able to make, you know, the right decision. Sometimes the best decision is silence. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Maybe yeah. making that decision That's tomorrow. Cool. Maybe making the right. statement right. tomorrow after you sit down right. and sleep on it is the best thing. Like, just accept it. Just take your ill. Take your, I'm going to take my ill today. But tomorrow, take it. yeah, I got you on the get back tomorrow. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? So that's 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 what I take. That's what I took from that too. And that's probably a perfect way to end it for episode three. Thank you guys for listening, watching the Underdogs podcast episode three with Ricky Davis. Shout appreciate out, appreciate you, appreciate Mike, Mike you, bro. Craig, as always. Oh yeah, Thanks, man. Craig. Thanks for having me, baby. I appreciate it. We always the underdogs, man. We keep going for sure. Always. For sure. I appreciate what y'all doing, man. I love it. Anytime you need me on, let me know. Thanks, so. Ricky. Appreciate you. See you guys next week. Go. Go, go, go. Go. Back, baby. New year, new ghost. We need them black jerseys this year. I ain't hearing no for no answer. Straight up.